What's happening, man? Mm. Mm. What's happening? Mm. Oh, man. Had a busy day, man. Had a busy day, man. Had a busy day. Had a busy, busy day. Salute Innate Ways in the building. Shout out to Innate Ways, man. Long time no see. Nate Ways in the building. Hop mm. Nation Hall of Famer, a.k.a. Ricky Henderson getting the ball rolling, man.
Wow. That's what the police station looked out in 20 in 2019. This is what it looks like now. During the 2020 protest. Yikes. What's happening, man? Yeah. The algorithm. Yeah. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. George Floyd Day. Happy George Floyd Day, everybody. Happy George Floyd Day, everybody. Robbery in Oregon really doesn't surprise me because Oregon has pretty much been the hotbed of lawlessness and anarchy. You know, when you've got elected officials like mayors or district attorneys that see themselves more as activists that think that they're doing the right thing by being soft on crime, instead of doing their job protecting people and being hard on crime being tough on crime and that's where the problem lies as far as a george floyd memorial getting vandalized i mean I, i'm still confused as to you know why george floyd even has a memorial i understand the whole derek chauvin thing was very bad and no law enforcement official supports derek chauvin but i mean just also a story came out that there were 21 kids under 18 killed since the beginning of the year where are their memorials? <laughs> you want to show them the reason George Floyd got his neck nailed on. <laughs> Don't ooh at that joke. It's just a joke, man. I would have never kneeled on George Floyd's neck. I would have shot that nigga. That was <laughs> making us look. Some random black person takes up for George Floyd. He's their god. I would have shot that nigga. That was. <laughs> Making us look. It's called comedy, nigga. How many more black fans I gotta hit that might leave? Oh, good shit, man. I got, I got. Cause, nigga, I was just warming up with that George Floyd shit. You ready to go? All right, baby. Okay. All right, you offended too, baby? That was too far for these black women. That was too much. I bet they from Memphis too, man. That was too much, man. Nah, man, you went too far, man. <laughs> Salute to Jared Pierce, man. Me with the braids, hey, you offended too? God damn, man, stop. Y'all good? Are y'all about to? 
I like Kyle Rittenhouse too. I like Kyle Rittenhouse too. You too, bro? Nah, damn, bro. Oh, but you fuck with me a little bit, right? Uh, see that in the air. Man, one more guy. Damn, man. That nigga don't even want to go, but his ride leaving. He don't even want to go. He like, man, I don't like George Floyd either, man. That nigga, that nigga had fit up. God damn, you got to stoop low for a joke. George Floyd would have robbed you too, bitch. Get <laughs> Uh. Now that we know that it was not, in fact, a pandemic of the unvaccinated, now that we know that Ukraine is not actually winning the war against Russia, it could be time to revisit some of the other slogans we've been assured are true and ordered to repeat. Are they, in fact, true? Did, for example, a racist white cop actually murder a man called George Floyd, a civil rights leader, in Minneapolis on Memorial Day of 2020. Now, we've been told that that happened, told it relentlessly for more than three years. So at this point, we've been told it so much that pretty much everybody seems to believe it. And because everyone does kind of believe it, a small group of people has been allowed to make massive changes to American society. They include, but are not limited to, decriminalizing stealing, defunding the police, adding a new federal holiday to the calendar called Juneteenth, the ceasing of hiring all white men in corporate America. And of course, significantly, they also sent a cop called Derek Chauvin to prison for more than 40 years. He would be the racist white devil who murdered George Floyd. But the question is, did he actually murder George Floyd? And the answer is, well, no, he didn't murder George Floyd. And we're not guessing about that. We know it conclusively, thanks to a new court case now underway in Hennepin County, Minnesota. The case was brought by a prosecutor there called Amy Sweezy. She's suing her boss. So the case is not actually about George Floyd or Derek Chauvin, but it tells you an awful lot about both of them. In her deposition, which you should read, Amy Sweezy describes a conversation that she had with the county medical examiner, Andrew Baker, right after George Floyd died. Quote, I called Dr. Baker early that morning to tell him about the case and to ask him if he would perform the autopsy on Mr. Floyd. Sweezy recalls all this under oath in the deposition. Quote, he called me later in the day on that Tuesday and he told me that there were no medical findings that showed any injury to the vital structures of Mr. Floyd's neck. There were no medical indications of asphyxia or strangulation. Oh. In other words, George Floyd, according to the official autopsy, was not murdered. He died instead of what we used to call natural causes, which in his case would include decades of drug use, as well as the fatal concentration of fentanyl that was in his system on his final day. So this was not a killing. It was yet another narcotics OD in a country that courts more than 100,000 of them every year. The medical examiner clearly understood that and in fact articulated it. And Sweezy explains. He said to me, she recalls in the deposition, Amy, what happens when the actual evidence doesn't match up with the public narrative that everyone's already decided on? And then he said, quote, this is the kind of case that ends careers. In other words, everyone lied about it from the very beginning. The people who knew the truth hid the truth and allowed the revolution to proceed. Now they've been exposed. Now we know the truth. What happens next? Well, they're going to ignore it. The Biden administration just issued a long purple statement celebrating George Floyd's birthday. He's a martyr despite the fact we know that he was not murdered. And by the way, Derek Chauvin is still languishing in jail for the rest of his life. So how do we respond to this? How do we respond to the truth once we have it? Well, Vince Everett Ellison seemed like a good man to ask. He's the author of Crime, Inc. He joins us now. Vince, thanks so much for coming on. So as with so many other stories, the oh, origin thanks for having of, me, Tucker. of COVID, oh, it's, it's a blessing to have you. Um, we now know what actually happened but the question then is, what do you do with that knowledge? We know that the U.S. government, Tony Fauci, worked with the Chinese to create the virus that overturned the American economy. But like, what do we do with that knowledge? What do we do with the knowledge 
that George Floyd was not actually strangled to death by a cop. We have to acknowledge the people that gave it to us and why. See, George Floyd is the Democratic Party's prototypical black man. These are the black men they are trying to create. So George Floyd has to be elevated. He has to be celebrated. He's perfect to them. He was poor. He was uneducated. He was a drug addict. <laughs> uh. Ashley Babbitt. You who press one of you think Ashley Babbitt would have slept with George Floyd, man? I think George could have cracked as Ashley Babbitt, man. Nah, you don't think so? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did this the other day. George Floyd changed America, man. Shout out to George. Woo, shit. Damn, George. If George Floyd would have told the truth about fentanyl and methamphetamine, could that have helped to save his life? Yes. Yes, it could have. Um, that's proven by what happened the year before when he was arrested by Minneapolis police and he was putting tablets in his mouth. Open your mouth. Spit out what you got. Spit out what you got. He admitted at some point that he had swallowed a bunch of pills and the paramedics came and talked to him and took his blood pressure and his blood pressure was extremely high, 216 over 160, and so he ended up going to the hospital. Hands off right now. If he had admitted that he had again ingested pills in the car. <laughs> God, dog. They got people in prison for this shit. That shit is just crazy. That's crazy. That people are in prison for this shit. Let me drop the link, man. A little late. Let me drop the link, man. Salute to everybody out there, man. Um, Let me drop the link. Oh. George Floyd, man. Wow, look at that thing as clear as day. Had he told the truth. And listen, man, I understand Floyd didn't, you know, he didn't want to go back to jail. This was a parole hit. He was thinking that he was, this was going to be a parole hit. And if he got arrested again, his parole officer would be notified. And then he would. So he was doing everything he could not to go back to jail so he wouldn't go back to prison oh ouchie, what you, are you on something right now I'm not, no nothing you act yeah. erratic. You if george floyd would have told the truth about fentanyl and methamphetamine could that have helped to save his life yes yes it could have um that's proven by what happened the year before when he was arrested by Minneapolis police and he was putting tablets in his mouth. Open your mouth. Spit out what you got. Spit out what you got. 
he admitted at some point that he had swallowed a bunch of pills and the paramedics came and talked to him and took his blood pressure and his blood pressure was extremely high, 216 over 160. And so he ended up going to the hospital. Put your hands up right now. If he had admitted that he had again ingested pills in the car when they were attempting to arrest him, things could have turned out much differently. That's a beat that's gonna go off on me, man. So we know now that the police body camera videos were withheld from. I wish that those videos had been out sooner, that they hadn't been withheld for two and a half months because it, the videos uh, portrayed quite a different story from what we had originally heard. I can't joke! I can't breathe! I'm just... You mentioned you went through these police body camera videos minute by minute. Right. What troubled you most? At the very end of Thomas Lane's body cam video. One of us to ride with? The paramedic handing the bag to Thomas Lane to ventilate the patient, you can see that the oxygen tubing is coiled up. It's not even attached to the oxygen source. That's a big mistake. When and how did you become concerned about the autopsy of George Floyd? I think we all saw video and television coverage of this. And I saw one of the body camera footages from the police officers that showed that he was complaining of shortness of breath before entering into the car. Right now. And I just had COVID, man. I don't want to go back to that. Okay. When I start breathing, when I start breathing, it's going to go off on me, man. I started realizing that, hey, something was wrong with this. A few days later, I found out that the autopsy report was available online. And so I downloaded the autopsy report and read through it. When I did that, my jaw hit the floor. underlying medical problem. George Floyd was a healthy young man. An article published in a peer-reviewed journal identified 17 errors in George Floyd's autopsy. Do these errors raise questions about how George Floyd died? Yes. In patients that have acromegaly, they tend to die from cardiovascular complications, such as heart attack or arrhythmias. Do you feel in a way they were trying to hide this information? I'm not sure if the medical examiners were trying to hide it, but it seems like the prosecutor team was trying to hide it. There's no mention of that in the original autopsy report, nor any of the other reviews, I wouldn't even call them autopsy reports, but other reviews by other medical examiners. What do you think about that? Very strange. It raises a lot of questions. The original autopsy was done 12 hours after he was declared dead. The official report that came out a little bit later, I'm told, was changed after the family had a review by two other forensic examiners. Those two examiners never did a physical autopsy and in fact did not view any of the slides or pictures. They complained that they did not have those. We acknowledge that additional medical information. Oh shit, that's who did the autopsy. Dear. Oh shit. Oh my God. I never knew that, man. I never knew she was the one who, oh my God. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Whew. She did the autopsy. That is bananas. Is this from the documentary, The Fall of Minneapolis? I don't know, let me see. I think it is a very, okay. very good documentary. Must okay. see TV. Yeah. 
This is crazy. She did the all time. Not view any of the slides or pictures. They complained that they did not have those. We acknowledge that additional medical information, including toxicology and further investigation, are necessary for a final report. What do you think of the federal government's involvement in this case? One of the first questions I asked was, was the FBI involved? And when I found out the FBI involvement was within 12 to 24 hours, that really raised a red flag for me. The FBI conducted a meeting with Dr. Baker, which really raised another red flag. I think there's a lot of questions that remain unanswered with this. And when I study what happened and how people and our leaders reacted to this, I just shake my head and almost cry in compassion of what has happened to Minneapolis. And instead of bringing people together, we've had the opportunity to do that, but I think opportunity was taken to drive us apart. Uh, you know, I salute to that queen. She stayed on cold. I'm telling you, man. She did, and they always do. They always do, except for Candace Owens and couple others, man. They always stay on cold, man. 100% of the time. You know, I, I gotta say, that video of George Floyd is the worst video I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Salute to the sisters for holding, for holding the, their kings now, man. Yeah, man. You are appreciated. You are appreciated. It must be nice to know that if you're a brother and you're out here doing dirt, the queen's got you. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, definitely, man. George Floyd, he had nothing to worry about, man. Sisters had his back, man. Um <laughs> Sisters are always gonna look out for a brother, man. Um, shout out to sisters, man. Here you go in the store, man. This is him in the store. Look what he was doing in the store. So bongo, 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 I don't wanna leave the Congo. Oh, no, 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 no. Look what he was doing in the store before he. Yo, man, this don't, this is don't do drugs. I think he was doing the fentanyl shuffle, right? This is our. This is our king, man. Take me to your leader, man. This is him, man. All right. This man right here changed the world. He died for us. I mean, God. Oh, man, we all been in the corner store. We seen this guy, man. Yeah, this guy man, right here is not, you're not supposed to have a 17 statues and four no. funerals for this guy, man. Yeah. A gold casket. I was just about to say that. Right, it just makes noise. It just, it's that's that's it shows where we're at as a society, you know how how much we've like dropped. Like new guy said, bro, the world is better off without him. Wow, unbelievable, man. Um, yeah, when you, when you see him doing his whole. Old unk shuffle, man. That's the unk shuffle. Wait, like, but, what is he doing? Like, but, but Floyd, I, right, let's be honest. I, right, this motherfucker, he was, he still had a lot of life in him. I've seen, I see, I've seen crackheads that are about dead. This motherfucker here looks like he still do some fucking damage on you, bro. Oh, he's, yeah. Bro, he's still at least like two something, bro. He's solid. He like, was he's like, very good at two seven. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've I've seen crackheads like they're they're about they're on the last leg. 
He was still, yeah, you know, he, he was still do her. Just imagine coming in that store that day, seeing that dude, looking at him and just shaking your head, then buying your stuff, going home, and then seeing the shit on the news and being like, oh shit. And then waking up the next day to a new, <laughs> right. old, new reality. <laughs> I mean, it's like, yo, that guy, yeah. This guy right here, I've led to several cities breaking homicide records. Because of this video right here, I fairly broke records. Uh, Brianna yeah. Real. Or I, yeah. it was Brianna Real because of Brianna or because of Florida. Both of them, fuck it. DC, Memphis. DC, New Orleans. They yeah, all they, were breaking records. Yeah, they turned up in Philly uh, after what was it, 2020 or 2021? Bro, we, yeah, we was, it was at the floor. Yeah, the, the record was 500, bro. I think in 2020, right. we had 499. And then the next year, we broke that shit by yeah. like 60, bro. Because all the some people, because of Floyd, started caping against the police and justice for black people. And then, then I mean, look what happened. Cause and effect, right? That video right there. Tell me. You know what I'm saying? I, I watched the George Floyd documentary that Candace Owens put up. One of the things that his two roommates said was, they want a tall guy like me. They want a tall guy like me. And the day when he died, he said a prayer for, you know, eight minutes. Mm -hmm. He said a prayer for eight minutes. They hit him with the fentanyl. If you look, the, the guy's knee wasn't even on his neck like that. When he said, mama, mama his, is his girlfriend. They said he screamed for his mama. Mama was his girlfriend. It's in the documentary. You know what I'm saying? Kanye too crazy, man. He he can't take him seriously, man. Kanye be fucking flip flopping, dog. I don't take this nigga seriously. Yeah, he a weirdo, man. Kanye's a weirdo, man. Like he, first, weirdo. he was act, I, he was acting like he was um fucking uh he he was being fake anti-Semitic, and then this nigga started apologizing to to the Jews and shit. It's like, man, fuck this nigga, man. I don't like this one of George Floyd. He was much more buff than this, man. Like, <laughs> this dude's scrawny, man. He didn't do him justice. Yeah, he was. He had shoulders and guns. This dude is like, like this man. is like George Floyd, like literally minus like 50, 60 pounds. <laughs> man, Floyd was solid, bro. Yeah. Man. Here's the mayor of Minneapolis. Oh, I hate I hate this motherfucker, bro. Look at this shit, man. Do you think Look at how weird this is? Do you think he's really crying? Do you think he really feels? Yeah, it? I, I think, think so too. I, I think, think so too. I put it like this: he's what he's. Those are real tears streaming down his face. I don't think he's doing the fake cry face. I think <laughs> I think these gliders believe all this shit, bro. Bro, I would be disgust if I was in that room. I'd be looking at him with disgust. Fisherman in the back. Like, 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 oh, look. If, if that was his mama, man, I feel you, bro. This is some crackhead from like down the street. Right, bro. These gliders, these these the woke gliders, bro. They, I, I, from from everything that we've seen, bro. The laws, the fucking. Motherfuckers kissing ni random niggas' feet. feet. Right. Like, bro, these they believe in this shit, bro. I hate all of them. All those people, I hate them. It's not a it's not a grift, bro. Man, look look at this shit, bro. Like he got snot. He's like, why would this He got snot bubbles. Bro, this is the this is the uh, those are those are the tears of someone that believes that a a, a innocent uh oh a, a innocent fucking black man all. got 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 wronged by society yeah right right exactly wow man, Joe. This is, he just this wishes is man. he just wishes his people would be his his fellow glider men would be less hateful and 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 be <laughs> show more grace for the for for his for his black brothers 
It's got to suck being like a normal glider, right? like a glider that's like, that can see through this. It's got to suck. I think you can hear him. Now, listen, I will say this. He's performing. Like, he could have, like, went off to the side and cried. Like, this is like, like, this is something that George Floyd's family should be doing. Like, not the mayor of the city. Like, like, like. This is this is a lot though. I'm not gonna sit here and not act like him kneeling in front of the casket in front of the whole church, like right. you know what I'm saying. Just doing this is not crazy, but it's it's just insane, man. It's just I think insane. I think it's genuine, but it's like you said, it's a performance. He wants to show he he doesn't just want to like you know be there. He wants to show everyone yeah. that he's standing in solidarity. And he's a certified nigger lover. <laughs> An ally, man. Oh, man. Oh, shit. Steve Harvey, yikes. This is about coming to the aid of another brother that has tasted the brutality of hatred, racism, and bigotry. In this situation, hate won't win. Mm -hmm. It will not. You didn't deserve nor anybody deserves to have a noose put around your neck. He had bleach. But can can but but can we make a, a statement of 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 sun turds killing sun turds? No, I mean listen. That's cool. This guy right here is Lee Daniel, very powerful guy and um these are, this is like the black and this is black Hollywood. This is the black elite. And this, yeah. This situation, hate won't win. Mm -hmm. It will not. You didn't deserve, nor anybody deserves, to have a noose put around your neck. He had bleach poured onto him. This needs to stop. He will forgive these people for what they did. And, but he won't. And we cannot forget their actions. And I like how Terrence Howard is like some world renowned mathematician in his head now. He's a weird old man. He's, he's a fucking a dumb shit. God, dog. He, he's speaking for him as, as if he's Christ. Now, this white woman. That's a tranny woman. now. She's worthless. Oh, this is a tranny? No, not in this point in her life, but now she claims she's a man and she cut her tits off. Her forehead big as shit. God damn. In honor of George Floyd, she cut her tits off in honor of George Floyd, or what? She, like, why she? Doing no, it? just because she's a crazy white woman. Oh, okay. Wow, that's bizarre, man. I ain't even gonna lie to you, man. That is. Right, but yeah, these people. These so solidarity. Uh, these people, you know, claim to be the moral compass of America, and they're all Looney Tunes. Like, none of these people oh. should be taken seriously on anything. Right about he will that. forgive these people for what they did, and but he won't, and we cannot forget their actions. And hopefully, it just opens up, opens up people's eyes. That's just what needs to stop, man. God. This is what hope. Hopefully, this opens up people's eyes. Is what for what needs to stop, bro. <laughs> Bro, they want, they need these hoaxes to be true so desperately, bro. I'm telling you, man. That's why they all jump on this shit. It's a yeah, yeah, I mean, they're all puppets too, though. Like they're, they're, they know what they're supposed to, you know, any mainstream thing. They all get calls from their agents, and they're told how to behave, and they do it without a doubt. Without a yeah, doubt, they, at but, all. Yeah, got the memo. And they know some people jacked off as celebrities, also. Yeah, it's crazy. God damn, why are we going backwards? There are a lot of evidence of uh, 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 violent incidents that happen at these MAGA rallies. This is, this is a, essentially terrorism, and you wonder like how deep it goes, these hateful groups that get together, or maybe hopefully it's just two people, but that's what I'm afraid of, that it's going to well, go I a mean, lot deeper. People call it the terrorism because the media does not. 
It you is. Know. It is. Yeah. It's domestic yeah. terrorism. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But I don't like that it's being put out there in the media that this is a right. possible yeah. hate crime. Right. I think that even sows a seed that makes people feel about. like, well, is he making this up? Yeah. Well, what is this about? Right. I don't well, like that. Like just Jesse Smollett. Is this all the way to say? This was Jesse Smollett. Yeah, this is Juicy Smollett. Oh, shit. I thought this was Floyd. Man. Yeah, this, this was for, for Juicy. Oh, shit. But it makes it that much more hilarious, though. Exactly, man. Like, wow. Like, because it does remember, this was 2019, right? This was before Floyd, right? So it's like, this was a a chip. This was a, 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 a axe swing at the tree. This this was one of the the the, the swings that was like yo, but think about it like think about the psychology. They all jumped on it, and then it was like it was a hoax, and then they finally had one that was aha, we got you this time, and they went all in on the Floyd. You know what I'm saying? They they basically this was, Floyd was their um their comeback. You know what I'm saying? Their it was their 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 respawning after being like it's kind of like when you kill something in the movie and the, the good guy walks away and then they show the um the bad guy on the ground but he's still like moving and shit. <laughs> so, yeah, he opens one eye and shit, and then some <laughs> some music cut on. You like, oh shit, this nigga ain't dead. Cause they all look stupid with Jesse. And then George Floyd comes around. They're like, "Oh, we got one. Nope, nope. We're gonna run this. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna let them have it for making us look stupid with Jesse Smollett." Because I remember with Jesse Smollett, I did much of videos on Jesse Smollett. I did the video the first night it happened. Did did they did any other people did any of these people issue a Mia Copa like, "Yo, uh, yeah, that nigga, Not that money. nigga was on some bullshit." Like we don't, yo, yo, I can't. They can double down. Go ahead. They double down. Wow. Many of them said that he was, um, that he was, um, uh, what's that girl? Me, Amber me, and Amanda. Me me. Skills. She was like, she said uh, that she still believed them, and Kim <laughs> Fox still believed them, and Michelle Obama still believed them. It was a lot of people that still believed. Them. Can you imagine I be you're the detective, right? Doing this case, and as you're investigating and you're going through everything, you start realizing this motherfucker lying. Yeah, that, that that's that that literally would have been one of the first things I would have because when I would have came in the hotel or his apartment and he would have still had the noose around his neck, I'd have been like, yo, what the fuck, dog? No. That's what I'm afraid of that it's getting well, a lot I mean, deeper. People are calling it terrorism because the media does not. It you is. Know? It is. Yeah. It's domestic media terrorism. Absolutely. But I don't like that it's being put out there in the media that this is a right. possible yeah. hate crime. Right. I think that even sows a seed that makes people feel about. like, well, is he making this up? Yeah. Well, what is this about? Right. I don't like that. Like, don't put that in people's minds. This man was hurt. He was injured friend. and he needs justice. It's the, the horrific yeah. details, you know, behind the premeditation for this attack yeah they didn't find a rope they brought a rope yeah. i mean uh we thought we pretty much thought racism had come a long way when uh president barack obama was president but by the way it had the majority of the people are in this country are retarded yeah yeah it kind of it kind of makes the incident that happened to that one actor from uh reservoir dogs when he got attacked Kind of makes it that interact because they, they didn't go into detail for that white guy, you know what I'm talking about? Where the brother just um su uh, sucker punched him. He was the yeah, actor Reservoir in Reservoir Dogs. Dogs. Yeah, the guy, the old the old white guy from yeah. Reservoir Dogs. Oh, you talking that. about Bushimi? Yeah, think about that one, right? No one gave a fuck about that when it happened. It, it just happened, right? They didn't go into detail about about his incident where this random son man premeditated, you know, attack this guy, right? You, you, I, you, you I about the fact that this case happened in Chicago and like, it couldn't be more like bizarro world that the, all these people are talking about uh, an, a violent attack in Chicago. 
And <laughs> it was this. This is the only violent attack in Chicago that any of these people have ever spoken about in public. Right. Think about that. That that neighborhood, the Gold Coast, I agree, where it happened, it, there's a lot of money there, right? It used to be a lot safer, I agree, after George Floyd. You could imagine that neighborhood is up for grabs. Like, if, if the glider could be walking down the street any time of the day. And guess who does what? All the time there, Chief. I'm not exactly. Yeah, I know. It's just bananas that, like, Ricky Smiley and Kevin Hart and Steve Harvey, black men from the black community, have never spoken about another incident in Chicago other than this. Yeah, it, it had, but but so then but then the hatred. Yeah. So so if you really want to get into that, you want you want to build a wall for somebody, build a wall for some of the white nationalists and supremacists. We have a media that's saying it's a debate whether or not what just happened to Jesse Smollett is a hate crime. It's absurd. <laughs> this isn't a debate. There have been people in the government now who have made it okay for people to announce these hateful feelings that they have towards other people. We really need to find Well, one people. of the things you and I were discussing earlier is clearly anyone who lives with this kind of hate is not terribly bright. Oh, sun people. Well, neither are you. Huh. <laughs> you just still do, you just actually said the truth. You just don't realize it yet. It's about you dumb coming bitch. to the aid of another brother you. that has tasted the brutality of hate. Yeah, man, this is crazy, man. It's, it's, it shows the power of conformity, like the the masses, the sheep, and the the desire to survive in that form of mechanism. Like conforming to the masses is a form of survival for most people, and they don't have the self awareness to understand that. Good morning, TikTok. By now, everybody knows the face of this beautiful little boy, five years old, shot in the back of the head by a black man while this little boy was riding his bike on his lawn. Uh, media outrage, where is it? That's what I want to know, where is it? Oh yeah, that's right. Cannon was white, George Floyd was black. That's oh. the difference. It doesn't fit the fucking narrative. So you tell me, where are the celebrities reaching out to pay for Cannon's funeral? or reaching out to pay for his siblings college. Where's his golden casket being carried by horses and where's his three fucking funerals? Where, where, why does it matter? He was five years old and shot for no fucking reason. George Floyd was black and a fucking criminal and breaking the law and he gets the golden fucking treatment. Fuck you media. Wait, hold on lady. Yeah. I mean, he could have said the N-word. Like, come on. That Can't little boy, that we did that. We did the Can the Hennet video, man. It was just pure evil, man. Um, they uh I think it was a ball that bounced in the black guy's yard, or uh the kid was riding his bike or something, but it was I think it was a basketball. They were playing on a basketball, the basketball went in the black guy's yard. He just smoked that little boy in broad daylight like literally just smoked him like went out came outside and blew his head off and just went up went like like i guess he fled and went on the run or whatever salute to jb man he says ak is the most sober son man this side of the sun salute man salute to you man appreciate you he says i regret my last super chat so here is more money. Now I can say I have supported the African American community and I have the receipts. <laughs> yeah, man. Salute to you, man. Salute to you so your support for the African American. I am technically, technically. Yes. Part of that. Hey, did y'all hear also that guy that uh that sucker punched Bushimi? He he sucker punched a uh an Asian kid. Not yeah, not long yeah, ago. we heard about that right before that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what? We're, we're no one's surprised by that, I'm sure, right? Who sucker punched who? The guy. Oh, you talking about? Oh, you talking about? Um, yeah, yeah, you talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. No one saw. No one. And I've done him had the enforcer. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's true, man. Um, oh, let's see. Oh, my president, man. 
Rupert. George Floyd was murdered. And there was a reckoning on race. It doesn't matter whether you're black or brown or white or whatever the hell color you are. It doesn't matter. We are all Americans. You'd be a black man who loves his country, even if it doesn't love him back in equal measure. This is like a love fest. Love fest. The love fest. We love you. George. <laughs> even if it doesn't love you, babe. Black people resonate with that though. Black yeah, they people love, love that no. shit, bro. Oh my, he he's love. speaking to he's speaking to the psyche of, of the yeah, average. Yeah, he understands nigga. the black man a lot, man. Yeah. Or his handlers or whoever's telling. Yeah, him. it's probably not. Well, I don't know if Joe felt like that because we got nineties Joe, bro. Look, look, even oh. the see, even the see now, old man could see through his brothers. I, easy, easy read. Yo, this was this was George Floyd's funeral. His, his mural was struck by lightning and collapsed in Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> wow, that is crazy. Uh, what does that tell you? Divine oh, forces at work. Yeah, I don't believe in God, but shit, that that looked like the work of the Lord right there. Remember him? Yeah, in the riots in St. Louis. That shit was disgusting. I'm still looking for that yeah. David Dorn video so I can show y'all on um, Rumble, man. That was the, one of the most disgusting displays ever, man. That man, they, they, that man was laying on the ground twitching for like ten minutes while a bunch of black people were just standing around over some TVs, man. Over some TVs. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I heard about the video. I, I don't remember it though. Yeah, they never called yeah. anybody. Wasn't it? They called police? any police. They put a sheet. Someone came out there and put a sheet over him while he was still moving. Like, basically, like, making it harder for him to breathe. It was insane, man, the brutality. The way this guy, his last moments were man, I... around a bunch of black people. I know he was hoping... If there was one white person there, man, he would it would it wouldn't have happened. He, he would be alive, him. bro. If it was just one white, one white I'm, not, person. I'm not gonna lie to you. I, his death was not any more special than all the deaths related to the George Floyd riots. A lot of people died violently during that weekend or week or whatever. Yeah, but his his was caught on camera and we got to see it, and it was uh, yeah, that's true. I, I know I know one of my guys. He's a pig, and he was there during the riot and. Yeah, he got to see some of the some of the sun activities, and he had to hear. He was telling me he had to hear about all oh, the gliders are loading. Fuck out of here! This right here, man. This was sick right here. I remember this shit. Sick, yo. Right. Vote for me. This is what I see. Vote for me. Total disrespect. Uh, yo, these niggas trap, bro. These niggas tribed up on that George Floyd shit. This shit worked though. That man. shit was crazy. It took a knee for him. Think about how sick that is. They took a knee for him having a knee on his neck. <laughs> These people are sick, man. Right. Wow. Fiery, but mostly peaceful protests. Look at that shit. Jesus Christ. Thank God. <laughs> oh, this sums it up, though. This picture sums up. What I understood that shit to be, you know, during this time, mostly peaceful protests. Mayo's monkey says he's four years sober. True indeed. Because you know he was using in jail. Like, he, this is the longest time he's gone without drugs. He was definitely getting high in jail, man. Definitely, man. Oodles and noodles or some shit for some trading tra ass. More like four oh. minutes sober. Yeah, he probably uh, he probably uh poop on your meat for some for some. Yikes! Fish. I don't think Floyd was like that, man. If I don't think Floyd, he don't strike yeah. me as no yeah. no butt pirate, man. But then again, when those people will do anything, you can't like a dude like that. The way he did anything to get out of that situation, 
you can't you can't put nothing past a guy that would that that that's that much of a rap. I got, like, I got these cheeseburgers, man. Yeah, he yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. The white woman. Wow, look at this. Wow. Look at that. that is impressive. This, this is uh this is like Suns making an attempt to turn America into Haiti. Like this is Sun America yeah. when it's unleashed. Yeah, it was a good. Right. It was a good. It was a good effort, fishermen. They did some damage, bro. Suns would Suns would be yeah. more comfortable in a, an environment like this. Very yeah, this is what this is. Uh, this is this creation of the Sun Mind. This is Sun Society. Yeah, this is like mm. this is this is our like this is us at our zenith. Like the the. The full, the full, the 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 full psyche of the sun man at, at work, and it, when it manifests, is, is this shit? Wow! But then those oh, we don't have any supermarkets, no drug stores, no <sighs> no stores. Period. Yeah, that's that's you know we don't we don't do shit like that. We don't make, create businesses and infrastructure and just. That's on. That's that's kind of how it is. I, you should see Lando. It's pretty much how you imagine it. Wow, Palestinians are facing similar situations as Black and Brown Americans. <laughs> Say family members of George Floyd at a protest on the fourth anniversary of his birth. <laughs> this is actually smart, bro. I I like I like this maneuver, bro. Align yourself with the. Uh, with the uh, with the BLM shit, y'all all tribe up in it against the white man. Wow, I mean, I mean, this is this is peak backfire on the Jews crew. I, I guarantee you, they did not see this angle coming when they orchestrated BLM. Nah, they yeah, that's true. Um, they they um they outmaneuvered them themselves, man. They got outflanked though, but they. What what happened is they got outflanked because here's the thing. When when they create when they create all this stuff and 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 they they usually can they control the media, right? So by controlling the media, you would think that like I could see how they thought they could control it because they control the media. So you have the this got outside of the media. This got this whole like um college shit this was like a groundswell and organic grassroots yeah that they didn't account for but they controlled the media they controlled the public discourse about this stuff they yeah. still do you can see you, you can see it every day i mean blm is pretty much i thought it was a juice cream it was like their thing you know what i mean yeah was, they just had to some people you know be the face of it yada yada let's see let's see the the family of floyd man Today marks four years since the murder of George Floyd. Minneapolis police initially brushed off his death as a medical incident during a police encounter. But his death would spark a tide of protests and policy. At least Preston sat down with his family and the loved ones of others killed in law enforcement interactions who say they still haven't seen the changes they've been advocating for. Wow. Think about that. Everything's changed and they're still complaining. Wow. Yeah, those, changes, those changes will never come. <laughs> they're asking about, for shit that can't be done. Think about how different it is. Like bail reform in every city. Like the, the experience a criminal has in the criminal justice system is night and day to what it was before George Floyd. Everything's DEI and CRT both came up. Those are two terms we did never heard of before Floyd. I'd never heard of CRT. I'd never heard of DEI. All Two these teams. things came up after Floyd. Our lexicon, our human, the, the words we use now, um, equity and disparities and all these were our language has changed. Everything's changed since well, Floyd. And, and they have I would the say nerve CRT to say, was definitely there. They have the nerve to say, no, I'm not saying CR, CRT was around, but as far as in the lexicon, CRT was 
was a was a was a like a prof, a professor might know what CRT meant, or some college student taking like racism classes in college would know what it mean. Everybody became CRT became in the human public lexicon. These terms became like words that everyone uses. Yeah, more often, yeah. They've been advocating for. I truly believe it, Trayvon's name will live on. Mm -hmm. It will. It will. It definitely will. A course of determination. These are families thrown into advocacy while in the midst of agony after their loved ones died at the hands of those working to protect public safety. This is a movement. This is not a moment. The families of Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner, George Floyd, and Tyree Nichols sat down. Yeah, what the fuck does Trayvon Martin have anything to do with what killed by authority? Oh my God. They're so stupid. Think about all these guys. All these guys, regardless of, you know, I'm sure their families loved them. But you got a guy who was selling Lucy's outside of a fucking liquor store. He'd been arrested 25 times for selling Lucy's outside the liquor store. And they now, asked him to move about. 50 times before they did anything to him. You got this guy. He's bouncing around, jigging, trying to use a, 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 a fucking 20, fake $20 bill in a fucking carryout. Like, look at these, these guys, man. The fuck? This, as the National Civil Rights Museum hosted a symposium tackling police violence. What does that justice look like to you? Going to jail for a hundred years. Nichols's mother. Jesus Christ! And if a son man had killed him, she would have forgave him, and just said, "We want justice." Salute to um Boy Kachin. He says China's government deleted George Floyd on purpose. A hundred K die each year from their Fenty dumping. Hoping to divide and conquer the U.S. Salute Akhen the nation. I mean, I mean, that's a conspiracy theory, man. I'm not going to say that, but um. Well, they are right, but I mean, look, I, I think we're more. We have we could blame China before we blame George, right? Shout out to um Deluxe Two Four Seven, aka Cal Ripken, aka the real MVP, coming through once again. Shout out to my man Barry. B, Ock Nation Hall of Fame. Well, shout out to Barry B. Boy Kachina says, Mao supported Black Panthers in the 60s. And same government supports BLM in Palestine today through front organizations like Freedom Road. Mm. Yo, I mean, I believe that. I'm not saying that they, that they, that they don't support these organizations. I just don't think that it, it's... Um, Fentanyl, George Floyd was was, was happened to like promote fentanyl and the use in America. And if anything, it would discourage fentanyl use in America. If you yeah, I don't think I don't think that's the angle either. Can you yeah. hear that dog gun? Dog, no, nah, no, nah, he no dog. Someone has like a that's dog barking. Like to you, going to jail for a hundred years. Nichols's mother, Rovon Wells, has spent the last year and a half fighting to see the conviction of five Memphis police officers, seen here beating her son in 2023. One officer has pleaded guilty to federal and state charges, while the other four have pleaded not guilty. It's difficult, of course, because you want everything to happen right away. You want them to go to jail because this is what happened to your child. But at the end of the day, I don't want anyone to say, oh, it was a mistrial because of this. We, the jury in the above entitled matter, find the defendant guilty. George Floyd's family did see convictions of the officers involved in his murder. Floyd's last nine and a half minutes on earth captured on cell phone camera, sparking outrage and unrest in a time of global uncertainty. Floyd's murder boldly showing America what it could not mask in a pandemic racial injustice at the hands of police. His killing also opened difficult conversations about how racism plagues black Americans across all facets of life. Floyd's brother, Felonis. 
the narrative around the world basically saying his brother's yeah. name fell of felonious <laughs> holy fuck? shit hope that's his rap name man floyd's brother felonious wow the narrative around the world basically saying if i can't breathe how can i survive mm. Just a few years later, Pew Research shows support for the Black Lives Matter movement is waning. We had conversations about race outside of policing. Four years later, do you think we've made that progress? I don't see no progression at all. We got wow. to continue. Yo, that the, white liberals are too stupid to see that and be like offended by that. White, ever, a white liberal ever you is should be offended. They should be like, wait a second, bucko. What do you mean you didn't see any? Like, if he would have said, I've seen, yeah, I've seen a lot of change, but this we still have a, so far to go. You know what I'm saying? Or the, the battle isn't won yet. We won the battle, <laughs> but we haven't won the war. This fucktard <laughs> said he hasn't seen it. Wow. <laughs> Yo, to his defense, he might not see it. Right? You know what I mean? You know? Oh, he doesn't even know what he wants. He's a retard. Like he just says a few catchy, you know, phrases, right. and that's all he, he could, really does. He could be retarded. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's all these people. They just say shit like, "Yo, we got to end racism and and hate." It's like, what the fuck does that even? What does that even mean? Right, right. Equity. Years later, do you think we've made that progress? I don't see no progression at all. We got to continue to put pressure on these people to pass these laws. At least 25 states enacted use of force laws restricting that. Right, man. It's like, come on, man. He said nothing has been done. Nothing. Wow. It's just, it's just like, yo, he should be flogged for that, man. Like, for all we went through and how all this affects us and how all of this has had detrimental effects on every single person in America, he should be flogged for saying, like, that's like my daughter, like my daughter or something, like, the way even she's more thoughtful and reflective than that. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, this guy's a child to say that I haven't seen nothing. No change. Nothing has changed. Yeah, the old gliders are too cut to say anything. They'll just let this shit rock out. All their efforts are in vain unless you end racism. Yeah, the, and, and racism and racism can never end because one viral video of some white person anywhere doing inconveniencing a black person or a clip of an interaction where the black person was being a complete jackass but you clipped it right. You clipped the 20 or 10 seconds in it where the white person might have just been like, to make it look like the white person, and that could go viral, and racism is still alive. And you can, and, and they get to keep on keeping on the fight. Yeah, this country ain't never changed. Change. At least 25 states enacted use of force laws restricting neck restraints in the wake of Floyd's death. At a federal level, what laws do you want passed? First of all, I want that George Floyd Justice the Police Act passed. That bill was reintroduced Thursday. It would increase law enforcement accountability and restrict certain policing tactics like chokeholds. What these families feel is a slow trickle for policing and justice reform. So they want to restrict chokeholds when he wasn't choked. The maneuver he died from was the knee maneuver. They're not trying to get rid of that. They're trying to get rid of Choco. No, he died from that Fetty. Fuels them to keep pushing for progress. I can just feel, I guess, the resolve, the resilience in all of you. Do you think if you were on these individual journeys that um, your strength would waver a bit? When people see us as a team, it's a force. Yes. So they know that we are not fighting this fight alone. Mm -hmm. Gwen Carr lost her son, Eric Garner, in July 2014. It's been 10 years since the world 
watched your son repeatedly say, I, I can't, can't breathe. breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Carr worked for years to secure a ban on chokeholds in New York State. Now she's working to reach mothers, guiding those on the roller coaster of mourning and advocating for their slain children. They feel like there's no justice out there. They don't feel that society thinks that they are worried. Your son was arrested 25 times. Where were you, like, where were you during that period of his life? Where he she was shopping for wigs, bro. <laughs> Fucking little orphan Annie was shopping for wigs. She was and telling then, him, come on, ba baby, just just keep hustling, baby. They Don't let him stop you. Wow. Worthy of justice. Mm -hmm. It's the stories known and unknown Sabrina Fulton believes must be told. We need to make sure that people are remembering what happened to these people, these, these tragedies, so that they can put themselves in our position and say, as a parent, I need to do what I need to do in order to make positive change. A change they all desperately want to come. For CBS Saturday Morning, Elise Preston, Memphis, Tennessee. I, I so remember how George Floyd's daughter said, my father's death will change the world. And it did. For a moment, people woke up in a way that they hadn't. But you see over and over again, attacks now on DE&I, attacks now on further attacks. DE&I, attacks. And I attacks now on further attacks on the Voting Rights Act. Um, this 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 onslaught of of going back to where we have been in the past, and so a lot of people are disheartened. How so quickly we rubber band, and the pendulum has now shifted back in a way that you know many see isn't progress. It it doesn't. Wow, <laughs> propaganda. That's all this is. Wow. Yeah, and and you know, per usual, women's opinions are irrelevant. Yeah. Instead of it instead of prison reform, they should be pushing drug reform. So so wow. Freddie Fred and all his can get the fuck out the street. It was four years ago today that George Floyd died, while three Minneapolis police officers pinned him face down on the pavement. One of them pressing his knee onto Floyd's neck cell phone video of the incident recorded by a teenage witness was seen around the world everyone subscribe to the channel make sure you subscribe to the channel everyone hit the like button thank you very much for subscribing and hitting the like button i did international protest over racism and police abuse and calls for police reforms despite that global reach for minneapolis it is still very much a local trauma John Collins is a senior reporter at Minneapolis Public Radio. He covers the future of policing. John, four years on, how much is this still part of daily life in Minneapolis? How present is it? You know, it's very present. You can walk down the streets and you see signs in people's yards still. You see murals of George Floyd. You know, if you go 10 blocks away from here, you'll see George Floyd Square, which is where activists have kind of set up you know, a Mecca to memorialize Floyd. And then he said a Mecca to memorialize Floyd. Wow. Yeah, mainstream thought is a religion to a lot of these people. Like they, they treat it as a religion. It keeps them safe. Yeah. No, it's I mean it's designed to be treated though. It's designed to be treated that way. Yeah. Yeah. My God, man. This is clown shit, man. Salute to um, Mr. Jake the Great, man. He say, we out here. Shout out to you, man. Mecca to memorialize Floyd. And then on top of that, this reform of the Minneapolis Police Department has been at the very forefront of what's been happening in the city for many years now. You know, folks are still very aware of of what happened to George Floyd and thinking no, about how not. they might be able to uh, avoid that happening in the future again. When it comes to police, so they're and just safety. trying to avoid that happening. They're not trying to avoid any of the fucking thousand murders that have happened in that city since then. 
these things these people say are so disrespectful, man. Like a thousand people have been murdered in this city since Floyd died. Murdered. Shot dead in the street. When it comes to policing and public safety, has anything changed? Yeah, lots has changed. I mean, the city of Minneapolis is uh, was investigated by the Minnesota Department of Human Rights, as well as the U.S. Department of Justice, and both of them found glaring problems with the Minneapolis Police Department. Um, so the Minnesota Department of Human Rights has a court-enforced agreement with the city of Minneapolis requiring all sorts of changes. You know, for instance, you know, one of the things they did right away was ban chokeholds. And we also expect a federal consent decree to be coming down at some point here, which will make other requirements uh, for the city of Minneapolis that they, they need to change with the Minneapolis police. So that would make Minneapolis the first city to really experience both a state and a federal consent decree on policing at the, the same time. So there's a lot happening right now. Has any of this helped rebuild the trust of the, uh, the residents of Minneapolis and the police department? Yeah, I think that's a long journey, John. I think for a lot of people, they're still waiting for the outcome of you know, all these promised reforms. And this does not come very quickly. So you got thugs terrorizing the city. None of them have had a knee on their neck. None of the thousands of thugs that have been running rampant throughout Minneapolis have gotten a knee on their neck since George Floyd. This is the same thing they always say about every stupid policy they implement. When they implemented affirmative action, it was, we just have to give it time, guys. 20 years, and we'll have black doctors all over the place that are competent, and none of that shit manifested. <laughs> well, it's not supposed to manifest. It's not. None of it is about what they say it's about. They just need to advertise it well enough to get it rammed through. And the effect that oh. it's really the effect that it's really supposed to have is the opposite of what they say. And by the time that effect comes around, it's too late, and they're on to the next game. Yeah, yeah. yeah the people that are smart enough to know that, yeah, they're left wing people. They definitely do it for that. You know, it comes very slowly, and it's many small steps. So people are waiting to see if they can actually feel like they trust what the city has been doing as far as policing in the last few years. I mean, I know there's a push on to change the civilian uh, oversight board of the police. Is that sort of an indication that they're still working to, to rebuild that trust? You know, th that's part of their process of just um, kind of, I think, learning exactly what does work. The new uh, civilian oversight board, it was created just a year ago, uh, you know, has had a ton of trouble, um, you know, coming up with new policies for the police department, or, um, you know, they're supposed to go through police complaints, but there's a huge backlog. So yeah, that's totally a part of it. Um, and it's something the city needs to resolve because it's required under the court enforced agreement. So it's going to be something they need to figure out. And at this point, you know, it's not clear yet how they're going to do that or when that's going to actually come together because it's, oh, dude, it's are you hearing yeah, this right. are you hearing this shit man yeah like how many layers of bullshit like when he says there oh yeah well there's a backlog of complaints have you seen some people getting arrested have you seen some people getting called to account for their behavior how much complaining goes on and how fake it all is so of course yeah. there's a backlog of complaints <laughs> and so it's like, oh, they found a bunch of pro. They found all these terrible problems. Like, what are the problems? Certainly, the problems that he would think worthy of complaining about aren't rampant violent crime. That's not a problem. You no, know, yeah. the, pro the problem that they found they need to solve is that like uh, too many violent criminals are like going to jail. We need to fix that problem. Yeah, the backlog is a bunch of sons that don't want to do work. <laughs> they were like, wait a minute. Reviewing shit's work. Right. But this shit is. And the, 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 these people know that it, the people that are already on board that are primed to receive this information and just accept it as given have been uh, groomed their whole lives to be receptive to it, to say like, oh, yep. Oh, there's problems. Oh, yep. I knew it. That's what they say. That's what we all know. That's what we understand. I can't believe we're not making progress. I can't believe this is still going on. It's just like it's sickening. 
Yeah, and and Marquavius getting shot. I mean, getting getting arrested, right? And he tussles with the cops, and he gets cut, scraped up during the tussle on the concrete. And they, you know, finally arrest him and take him to jail. He goes to the hospital. They take him to the hospital first. You know, what I'm saying then he files a lawsuit against the police of his of his city wherever whoever did abused him or caused the scrapes on his elbow during the arrest and that goes into the law as a complaint goes into the backlog complaint. yeah and, and, the, well, and the 10 people that watched him get arrested and tried to interfere now why is you doing that why is you touching him like that you ain't got to do him like that that's a whole that's a whole female you touching her like she a man you know you know it's like oh they can file complaints too Yo, yo, your accent, man. Yo, you, you got that whole shit female down, was hey, was yo. perfect. Yo, that's a whole yeah. female right there, cuz. That's a whole okay, female. Okay, I'm a, okay, Ooh. but you ain't gotta. Okay, but you ain't gotta touch me like that. I'm a whole female. I'm not a dude. You what a bitch you in doing? the ass. What is you, you doing? You got you finna down. you finna lose your job, yeah. pussy. So today, George Floyd was murdered in Minneapolis. He was 46 years old. And by now, you've seen the video. Then Minneapolis police officer. This guy, this this news bottom of the rung in this in the upside down society. That's who needs to be making the decisions. Shout out to JB, man. He says this ship is sinking, and U.S. leaders are grabbing the gold while we are distracted fighting each other over scenarios they crafted, as we can see clearly with this episode of Op Nation. Facts, man. Four years ago today, George Floyd was murdered in Minneapolis. He was 46 years old. And by now, you've seen the video. Then Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin knelt on his back and neck for more than nine minutes as Floyd repeated. And you knelt on your back for more than nine minutes last night and got poked by a white dude. Oh, God. Yeah. Nigga with shirt, shirt and then. That video touched off something in this country. In the big cities across the U.S. and around the world, tens of thousands of people at a time demanded an end to police violence against black people. Even in small towns where there really aren't many black people, people march These with white signs people, that are... Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? So just Isn't run it? them over. Their Isn't minds it? are gone. <laughs> oh, they're the, yeah. most aggr- they're the most aggressive about it because they'll never, they'll never actually encounter the, the, the consequences. I hope that's not in the hood because they they laying on, uh, most likely laying on all these loogies and 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 fucking stuntmen spit for motherfuckers that just rolled up on some zaza. Yeah, okay, no, these no, people are probably. Time. No, he's saying this. You know, he's saying people in small white towns. They're probably jabbed though, so they're all probably going to be dead soon anyway, or well, already but- dead. My town, like the white people in my town, uh, they're not like this. But there, there's a uh, put like this: the richer, the the more wealthy ones, but the working class ones, they would never do nothing like this. This is some like liberal yeah. enclave shit. You know I never saw saying? it in my area either. I saw maybe one to two ha- signs for Black Lives Matter outside somebody's house. I think that was it. If you got to work with them, like if you're if you're from a lower status and you got to work with sons, it evaporates any sort of fucking empathy for this stuff pretty quickly, I feel, for obvious reasons. Yeah. 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 If if you don't also if if you don't have too much like like, for instance, in my town, like when there's literally like no white crowd. Like fent, um, what is it? Not fentanyl, but um, meth. Meth is huge here, but you wouldn't even fucking know it. Like, there's no like corners where a bunch of white guys are standing around doing hand to hand meth transactions. You know what I'm saying? That's why they don't get arrested as much for the fucking drug <laughs> trade. They're not fucking retarded, smoking a blunt in the goddamn subway. That's why they don't get arrested. Black Lives Matter. And before I go any further, this narrative that these were rampages destroying America's cities, 
Yes, there was. Oh, they're going to rewrite the history. Wow. They most definitely were. They most definitely were rampages. Even Chris Cuomo is like, who says, uh, you know, protests have to be peaceful? Like, well, I got it chronicled. I have all that chronicled. So I don't I, all that. All those videos on my channel. Yeah, I got all of the videos, man. People, people marched with signs that affirmed Black Lives Matter. And before I go any further, this narrative that these were rampages destroying America's cities. Yes, there was some arson, some looting and vandalism at some protests. But by the end of June 2020, 96.3 percent of the 7,305 demonstrations involved no injuries, no property damage. That's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, because they count they count one of the 7,000 as some dude on a corner held a sign for a minute and then went exactly. home. That's or they just made it up. Like these yeah. numbers could just, just totally <laughs> be made up. There were, there were literally 9,000. The number I had, I had um got out of articles back when this was actually happening was 9,000. And they were all fucking intense and scary man so yeah, yeah they just made this up this is just a made up of right money. it's like at night it was a different demonstration it's not yeah. part of the seven thousand because it didn't count yeah it, you know yeah, the, it's looting, like, the looting is like separated that's probably what yeah they it's like what i told but people ever gave me that shit i would say listen what if i showed up for a speech and everywhere i showed up for a speech that night a bunch of people fucking came and destroyed the town would you think Hmm, that has something to do with this guy. <laughs> right. That's according to a group that studies marches and protests. So we've now settled that. Oh, okay. Then. That, a, a, gr a group, some group. We're not even going to acknowledge who they are. Did you hear what he said? So now we've settled that. Yep. Yo, that's crazy. That these were rampages destroying America's cities. Yes, there was some arson, some looting and vandalism at some protests. But by the end of June 2020, 96.3% of the 7,305 demonstrations involved no injuries, no property damage. That's according to a group that studies marches and protests. So we've now settled that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's according to a group that studies marches and pro. This is the psychology of this is why trust the experts worked. This psychology yeah. is, is so well established. Did you catch it though? I don't think you caught it, Fabian. Nah. He what's said up? by the end of June 2020. So they're only counting the 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 there, there were seven thousand nine of uh, three hundred and five um protest between May 25th and the end of June 2020. Not counting yeah. August, September. It only July. the only reason, the only reason it kind of has to be a little bit verifiable is just in case it slips out, somebody looks it up, somebody posts something, it goes viral, so they can say, well, actually, this is accurate because blah, blah. Otherwise, it doesn't have to, it doesn't matter. The people who this messaging is crafted for are so motivated to just swallow it on down. All he has to say, that's according to a group that studies these things, and everybody's oh. like, yep, there it is, boom, gotcha, that's it. You know, yeah, it's just the, like... The, yeah, the study, study is the magic many, word. The fact that there were that many protests in the first month of this shit is insane because these protested remember Rashad Brooks was next and remember Jacob Blake like it was one after the other after the other these things were raging into 2021 they yeah, kind of calmed yeah, down sure. after, yeah. after Biden won the election but they still kept going a little bit after, yeah, after but it, November if, if they had to say something about that, they could just fudge the numbers on that too. They could just make crap up too. They could just define what constitutes a demonstration and whatever suits their message they want to send. Man, they didn't waste time with Blake though, man. They fucking burnt that Wendy's like the next day, I think it was. No, the Wendy's was Brooks. Oh, it was Brooks? Oh, that was Brooks. Yeah. Yeah. Matter. 
And before I go any further, this narrative that these were rampages destroying America's cities, yes, there was some arson, some looting and vandalism at some protests. But by the end of June 2020, 96.3 percent of the 7,305 demonstrations involved no injuries, no property damage. That's according to a group that studies marches and protests. So we've now settled that. But the summer after Floyd's death was branded as a racial reckoning in America. Was it? And we certainly saw a lot of performances. Remember these? This was Blackout Tuesday. People posted black squares on social media. This was in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. Record companies that day said, we're not going to release any new music. Aunt Jemima came off the pancake box. Uncle Ben became Ben's original. Eskimo pie is now Edie's pie. Damn. All long overdue. But Eskimo pies. Well, at least when I have pancakes and rice, I don't have to look at black people anymore. <laughs> oh, my God. Bro, bro, they how they just going to destroy all this classic American history, man? And Tremima was based. I don't care if she's a mammy. I miss yeah, her. Man. I, don't, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I love they her. Race yeah. Us, man. yeah, that was some fucking bullshit. <laughs> race, black or race, sure, man. Aunt Jemima had a, had, as I say, Aunt Jemima had family members, and I'm surprised when they went to Pearl Mill pancake mix or whatever, they didn't just call that company up and say, I want the intellectual property on my ancestor, and they just re-release Aunt Jemima's pancakes. That's what they should have done. Yeah, black folks don't think like that, man. But um, this is this is this is erasure. They literally erased a bunch of black icons, man. Like literally, like and gave us George, like five George Floyd um statues. All long overdue, but that was not the point. Some Confederate statues they came down, though not without a fight. Cities painted Black Lives Matter down the middle of the street. That was not the point either. The point of the movement was to end police violence and disproportionate use of force against black people. But it didn't. Four years since George Floyd's murder, use of lethal force still plagues American cities. According to... I mean, <laughs> does it really? Like, is it really? That's what's happening. Yeah, what's it, what take, a, take a survey. What's plaguing your city? <laughs> he's saying that, well he's saying that like it's supposed to be no sort of like physicality no yeah it's like what, what the fuck as opposed to what like it's supposed to be no no like police like physicality between them and these and these niggas like what, what no. the fuck you want them to do i mean that's, yeah that's basically what nothing. what they're demanding it's like fucking <laughs> unworkable but that's basically what they've been saying since saint floyd's uh you know since his uh crucifixion according to the aclu police killed at least 1247 people in 2023 yeah and 800 of those white guys <laughs> And fucking almost all of them were like justified almost. Where they had a gun. Like, come any on. Previous year on record. And so far this year, there have been only nine days in which police did not kill someone. The movement called for a change in how police officers are trained and how they're held accountable. But the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act is still not a reality. It was reintroduced in the House this week where it will likely die again. So four years, and where are we? Joining me now is George Floyd's brother, Terrence Floyd. Oh, my uh, God. Good to oh see my you. God. Um, I want to start, though, with your brother. How many brain you cells? An icon. You didn't lose a catalyst. You lost a loved one. You lost a brother. So on this day, what goes through your mind goes through your heart? Um, Probably lost a dealer, I, too. I remember the... May 25th, 2020, but also I remember uh, my brother as he was, you know, um, gen gentle giant is what we used to call him, you know, because he's a big guy, but he was loving. Nigga. Gentle giant. Oh. They never <laughs> call him Come that. On, bro. Nah, but listen, though, yeah. listen, though, I, 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 as a son, man, I, listen, I, I believe that because here's the thing. It's relative. Having gone to prison 
twice for robbery, once in the 90s and once in the 2000s. In the black community, you the bar being in fucking 80s, <laughs> you could be considered. Listen, I, I know a bunch of guys that are just, you know, career criminals. And yeah, I mean, like, yeah, they're considered nice guys, man. They're not like considered ravenous wolves. They're just, yeah. That's I mean, actually could happen. He didn't kill anyone and he pointed a gun to that lady, but like, it's like, you're kind of right. Like in Blackistan, you know, he's just a guy. He's, he's an upstanding citizen, basically. Think about this. Think about this. Every, you, you're in a community where there's mo, mo, most of the stories we do, there's nobody in custody, right? So, like, when we do these shootings, there's nobody in custody. Police are asking the community to come forward. If you know anything, tell the police, da da da, da right? So, a lot of these guys are just out there, right? So, you're in a community where you have murderers just roaming around killers roaming around um a guy who's just you know what i'm saying like a robber and a half a crackhead who may have killed somebody during a robbery sometime in his life and gotten away with it but you know what i'm saying like it's not like you know an active <laughs> shooter out here shooting up shit. yo good guy <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's all right. He a blur. He's an all right guy. That's a Steve Urkel. Yeah. <laughs> you got I mean, listen, man, I I I consider myself a good guy. And I've done a lot of bad things too, man. And I consider myself a good guy and like the people that I know, the guys that we, I did a lot of the bad stuff with. A lot of those guys, I consider them good guys. You know what I'm saying? Even to this day, it's just a different reality. It's a different world, man. I mean, put put it this way. If every single black man in the country was George Floyd, then the murder rate would be cut in half because he didn't kill anybody. Yo, listen. So there you go. Every, listen, if every black man was charged appropriately for the crimes that they committed, you would have to take two or three states and turn them into penal colonies. <laughs> it would be a gorilla zoo, basically. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's constant. I'm telling you, man. You would have to take like Wyoming and Colorado and just make Yo, penal was, colonies. I was just about to say that. Yeah. I would say we just seize Haiti and then just make that the penal colony. <laughs> it's not big enough. Haiti's not big enough. Man. Oh, that's that's something they can figure <laughs> no, out on their own. Not, no, they're they're yeah. working on it. They're working on it. They're, they're figuring they're, out. They're Plus, work, you know, they're working on the population density. Yeah, right, right. They they won't be alive long. You know, you just dump them all in Haiti, drop some guns, and problem resolves itself. Yeah, send them down there with barbecues. Love the community. See what happens. He, he loved the community that he was from, which was Houston. Nigga who had um, drip. I just listen to what this dude was said. in. He loved the community that he, he loved the community that he was in. He loved the community that he was from, which was Houston. He literally went to prison twice, <laughs> prison, for armed robbery while he was in Houston. See what I'm saying? See yeah. what I'm saying? And for robbing people in Houston, Houstonians. Loved the community that he was in. He loved the community that he was from, which was Houston. Um, I just... I just miss him, you know, and um, that's basically what I'm feeling right now. Yeah. You have since started um, a nonprofit. Um, <laughs> and, and I wonder, as you assess the changes since 2020, oh my is God. there some substantive... And listen, some philanthropist has given him a fucking stack of money to just do something, whatever the fuck he's doing, just because he's George Floyd's brother. Of change that you see that um, that maybe I left out that you see that there is progress that is measurable in the last four years. Well, like you said, I, I started my nonprofit organization called We Are Floyd, uh, based out of Brooklyn, New York. Um, 
on the on the on the the, the street what side, does it the do side, the local side i see change when it comes to the people with, with uh with unity with um love and compassion for their neighbor yeah and they feel like they can get away with more as shit. Far as the police i see some change you know like i usually say slow motion is better than no motion mm. i see s- slow movement on it you know uh where there are officers there always been officers in the in the in law enforcement that cared for the community and it was always the the rotten apples that made it bad who's that made it bad for all of them you know but i see more coming out and really co- being compassionate with the community especially where i'm where i'm from yeah. Letting yeah, thugs get away Brooklyn, with I shit. That. I saw that you uh, were at the funeral service for Frank Tyson uh, in Ohio. Yes, sir. Uh, we showed the body cam video earlier this month of where uh, in Canton, Ohio, police officers there, they knelt on his back. Uh, and afterward, he said he couldn't breathe. The officer said that uh, you're fine. Shut the F up. When you see... Um, an officer kneeling on the back of of a man he says he can't breathe he then subsequently dies what what goes through your mind what do you feel as you're there with another family i feel i feel it's it, it's uh, uh hatred towards us for some reason i see a hatred towards us and um and and, and it, has, it has to stop that's why my family along with other families and um and, and, and politicians and, and people in the community. Uh, Let me go to his website, man. His, his website is, he has a website, he got a mission statement. So let's see what he, his mission statement is, man. Um, <laughs> um. The goal, hmm. stay informed <laughs> and stay motivated. Follow our blog for stories of change and hope and the fight for social justice. At we are Floyd organization. We are deeply committed to serving and uplifting marginalized communities in New York City. We understand the struggles that minorities face, particularly when it comes to mental health, poverty, police brutality, and social just injustice. Our focus is to be a supportive and instrumental force in advancing the cultural well-being of our communities. Above all, our priority is to give the youth and young adults in our community hope for a brighter future. That's the mission statement. So nothing. (laughs) Yeah, so basically nothing. He just collects money and goes around to places. Another Ponzi scheme. Yep. We are, we are Floyd organization is dedicated to serving the culture through leadership and service based in New York City. Our focus is to be instrumental in supporting the cultural advancement of our communities, helping minorities dealing with mental health, poverty, police brutality, and social justice, and most importantly, giving our youth and young adults in the community hope for the future. Our aim is in accomplishing these goals is to continue our outreach through community activities and social involvement. For uh, what? <laughs> uh, and social involvement. Man, what the fuck is this sun word talking about? Nothing. Nothing. You don't even know who wrote that. Some who knows who wrote that yeah, crap. Yeah, this who wrote- this is too well written. Too well. Did you see? Well written, bro. He did you guys it. see? No, obviously not. Did you guys see Philanese Floyd's address to the UN? Oh Lord! You oh, gotta God. see that. You oh, gotta God. see that. Oh, oh my! God. I ain't Stop see it, bro. Me. You didn't know. Oh, it's the me. best. It's the best. What's his name? How you spell it? P H. I'm looking it up too. P H I L O. N I S E, I think. Oh, yeah. Boy, oh, yeah. It, was, it sound like felonies. Yeah, right really? there. You got to what's you? It's hilarious. UN. He spoke at the UN. Wow. We, we are Floyd. 
Oh my God. You just look at how oh. scripted. It's like he struggles. He struggles to recite the script that was written for him. It's amazing. Wow. Kind of like the, what's that girl's name? The little girl that's always yelling about climate change. Oh, um, Greta Thunberg. Thunberg. Yeah, she, he, he's, he's like George Thunberg. Let's see. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in. The, no, I'm gonna put it in the back chat. It's right here. I'll put it in the back yeah. chat. Oh, yeah, man, that's crazy, man. He spoke at the UN. Oh, my God. <laughs> That is that is insane, man. That this clown got to speak it just for being the, the, the whole script is exactly like that website. It's the same non, it's the same nothing. And it's so obvious that he could never have Hi, come up with my these name words. Honest Floyd. Look at him, man. Like, yo, I <laughs> Hi, my name is Falonis Floyd, and I'm the brother of George Floyd. On May 25th, 2020, my brother was tortured and murdered by four police officers in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and the United States. List. I thank you for holding this urgent meeting for the opportunity to speak to you today. My brother was unarmed and was accused of passing a counterfeit $20 bill. The entire incident showed my brother murdered was captured on camera. My family and I had to watch the last moments of his life when he was tortured to death, including the eight minutes and 46 seconds one officer kept his knee on my brother's neck. My brother begged the officer for his life, cried out for our mama, who was already dead, and said over and over again, I can't breathe. Even after my brother was unconscious, stopped moving and stopped breathing, the officers kept his knee on my brother's neck for another four minutes as many witnesses begged the officer to take his knee off my brother's neck and save his life. The officer showed no mercy, no humanity, and tortured my brother to death in the middle of the street in Minneapolis and with the crowd of witnesses watched and begging them to stop showing us black people the same lesson yet again. Black lives do not matter in the United States of America. None of the police officers were fired for murdering my brother until masses of people in the United States and around the world protested the injustice. Oh, when man. people dared to raise their voice and protest for my brother, they were tear gassed, run over with police vehicles. Several people lost eyes and suffered brain damage <laughs> to rubber bullets. Peaceful <laughs> protesters were shot and killed by police. Journalists were beaten and blinded when they tried to show the world the brutality happening at the protests. When people raise their voices to protest the treatment of black people in America, they are silenced. They are shot and killed. My brother, George Floyd, is one of the many black men and women that have been murdered by police in recent years. The sad truth is that the case is not unique. The way you saw my brother tortured and murdered on camera is the way black people are treated by police in America. You watch my brother die. That could have been me. I am my brother's keeper. You in the United Nations are your brothers and sisters keepers in America. And you have the power to help us get justice for my brother George Floyd. I am asking you to help him. I am asking you to help me. I am asking you to help us, black people in America. I hope that you would consider establishing an independent commission of inquiry to investigate police killings of black people in America and the violence used against peaceful protesters. Was this before Man, showing that conviction? Yo. Uh, how many no, takes? How many takes did they have to do to get him to say those three syllable words, ah. man? Did you yeah. see the editing? <laughs> They had to. That do you know? This took hours. What had happened was, my brother now was. I'm in the asking. Street. I'm asking you to. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch ass motherfuckers. Oh, sorry. Oh you can't say that. 
It sounds like he wanted to say, yeah, I hope they die. He and I hope care. they burn in hell. He and first off, the United, Nations, the United Nations don't even recognize black as a people. So what is he talking about? <laughs> None of it makes any sense. Like, what are they supposed to do? <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, uh, like, he, you, what, what does Phil and it, like, when this happened, did Phil and these Floyd, when they called him and be like, hey, we're sorry to inform you, your buddy, he's like, what? George is dead. Shoot, I ain't heard from him since I bought that. that since I bought, I bought some crack from him like three years ago. Say, well, of course he did. I thought, <laughs> I thought he was dead two years ago. What you some good? You talk? Damn, yeah. I'm hungry. Yeah. I'm hungry for a banana. I just want a banana mayonnaise sandwich, man. You talk about George? Yeah. And then they I'll and then you. they gave him fifty that fifty million dollars and said, hey, read this script. We're gonna send it to the UN. He's like, shoot, I, I, I try. I, I ain't the best a reader, but I, I, I give it a try. See? Yeah, those freaking Arabs are probably just sizing them up to see how much you would sell for. The entire time here we you go. <laughs> Look what we got here. Senatobia Police Department is facing a $10 million lawsuit. It comes after a woman says a police officer sexually assaulted her during a traffic stop. And tonight, only on Fox 13, this victim shares with us the moments leading up to that alleged assault. Fox 13, Sierra Jordan was covering this story before she went to that breaking news you just saw her live on. She has the latest. The $10 million lawsuit was filed by attorney Carlos oh, Moore. Now, I was able to speak to the victim, and she says she is now dealing with emotional and mental distress and physical injuries after she says she was sexually assaulted by a Senatobia police officer. Nobody deserves to go through that. That's the law is supposed to protect you. The city of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's I know that's baby. right. Tell them, girl. Mm -hmm. She probably gave it up. <laughs> they say blonde's supposed to have more fun, but I ain't had no fun with that police <laughs> on. Mm hmm. Shoot. The city of Sanatobia, Mississippi is under a duty to operate its policing activities lawfully to preserve the peace of the city of Sanatobia. However, Santara Jackson says her civil rights were violated during a traffic stop. Like I was having nightmares and stuff. Last summer, Jackson says she was a passenger in her female.